Giving thanks prepares you to praise God. Because here's what thankfulness will do for you. Thankfulness puts something in your heart and gives you an attitude that's right. It's hard to, you know, I've never known anybody to be praising anything when they're down in the mouth about stuff. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't, I've never known anybody to be excited amen, when they're being miserable. Have you ever noticed that when you have good things happen to you, you seem to have a better mood? Maybe I'm wrong on that. I guess I'm the only one around here who believes that. I don't know. But I've found out that, you know, when good things happen to me, I tend to be smiling a lot more than when bad things are happening to me. I, you know, that's, maybe that's just me. I'm going to chalk it up just me being me, I guess. Usually, you know, if I have, you know, when the washer breaks down and the car goes flat, and, you know, I don't walk around going, woohoo, I'm having a great day. Just the opposite's probably true. I'm, I'm, I shouldn't let it affect me, but I'm going to be honest with you, probably sometimes it does. Uh, but when it comes to praise and worship before God, I never let anything that goes on out there, I don't try to let it affect me when I'm in here. Because this is my opportunity when I get a chance to praise and worship God. Because praise is a doorway that leads me to the place of worship. Praise and worship are two different things. But what praise does, amen, is it gives you the opportunity to move into the place of worship. Worship was the place where the needs were actually met. The king in the old time would extend his scepter to those that would get all the way up to the throne. You see, sometimes we hang out in the courtyard and just say, thank you, God. There's nothing wrong with that. At least you're in the courtyard. Right? At least you're not on the outside of the city. But praise moves us into a deeper relationship, actually gets us inside the building. Amen. But worship brings us to the throne. And it's important that we understand that. Amen. That God called you. Of all the callings that you have in this life, the one calling that you have and will always have is the calling to be a worshiper of Him. He said He called you out of darkness into His marvelous light to show forth the what? The praises. I told some folks one time, I said, I don't know what you're going to do when you get to heaven. I guess you're just going to wait for them to tell you to worship. I guess. I don't know. I said, but that's not what the book tells me. Amen. So they were around the throne of God, and they were worshiping around His throne. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. But I might as well practice while I'm here. Well, I don't know about you all, but I, man, y'all are making me nervous tonight. Man, y'all be quiet as church mouses, and it makes me nervous here. I'm not sure how to respond right now. So y'all hang on with me, would you? This is a dialogue. Remember I told you, this is not a Johnny Carson monologue around here. This is a dialogue. Amen. Read your Bible. Amen. When the word would go forth, they would say at least amen if they agreed with it. Okay, thank you. That helps. I appreciate that. Amen. So I, I just want to get into the power of praise tonight. I shouldn't have to tell us this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Sometimes we need to be reminded. I thank Brother Lloyd for his lesson Sunday on the oneness of God. Fantastic lesson, amen. And I know he had more to that. Amen. It's hard, but you can't put that stuff in a nutshell. It's very difficult to do. You're talking a great theological uh, theological concept, amen. It's very much hard to do in one lesson, amen. And I'm going to give him more time on that, actually, amen. But uh, Psalms 8, verse 1 and 2 says, uh, we're going to put that up real quick, Brother Travis. Psalms 8, verse 1 and 2. Uh Uh-oh. Man, you guys used to be quicker than this. What's going on up there? We'll talk about you if you keep it up. All right. (laughs) Excuse me. To the chief musician upon Giddeth, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who have set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the works, or consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. You know what, this is a very awe-inspiring psalm to me. Let me tell you why. (laughs) The psalmist is saying this, when you did the moon and the stars, it's just a little bit of a finger work for you. What's your picture that in your mind's eye, if you would? Eh, there you go. 
the moon and all the stars. It was just a work of your fingers. I find that interesting to me. Uh, David learned a key spiritual concept during his life that helped him get strength from God in his trials and silence his enemies. Something so simple that even a small child can practice it. This is, let me tell you something why I love praise so much. More than anything else, you don't have to have a theological degree to praise God. Can I say that again? The most simple individual in the world can praise God. All you gotta do is have a voice. That's it. If you can lift up your voice, you can praise God. Amen. There have been times in my life, I'm gonna be honest with you, that <clears throat> I'm so thankful. Y'all gotta excuse me, I've had something choking in my throat all day today. I am so thankful that I've had situations come up in my life I did not know what to do. I really did not have an answer. I have prayed. It didn't seem like I got an answer from heaven. I, there have been times where I've just got direction from the Word of God and it just seemed like there was just nothing there. Amen. I'm not saying it wasn't there. I just wasn't seeing what was there. But I put my hands to heaven. I said, okay, God, this is all I know to do at this point. I'm just going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. And I'm going to let you step into the situation. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have praised and I have worshipped my way out of trouble more times than I can shake a stick at. Amen. More times than I, I, I can tell you of financial issues when I was younger in the Lord. Amen. That God has just taken me through so many situations just to show me His pure power. And situations that will rise up. Amen. Uh, because the devil, he likes to launch so many attacks against the children of God. The Lord has given us one weapon that will stand strong in the face of every assault. And silence the enemy every single time. Jesus referred to the same concept during his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. As he came into the city, the people began to realize who Jesus was. They began to enthusiastically praise him. Give me Matthew chapter 21 verse 15 and 16. Matthew chapter 21 verse 15 and 16. I'm going to have you bouncing around a little bit tonight. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto them, Hearest thou what they say? And Jesus said unto them, Yeah, yeah, you have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. He quoted that psalm that David had written. Amen. He quoted that psalm that David had written. Amen. And he said, you know, he was basically declaring his Messiahship before them. He said, I am he. I am the one that you've been looking for. He said, I'm the one, even the babes and sucklings of babes and the mouths of uh, sucklings and babes, amen, are praising here today. Do you understand that? That's why folks that get mad at kids that praise God, I don't understand it. I don't understand why they get frustrated with children that praise God. I mean, I guess they could be cheating on people and hurting people and doing other kind of mean things if that's what you expect them to do. But, man, I'd rather have, much rather have them praising God. Amen. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. He said, notice what David said. He said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, he has ordained strength. While Jesus said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Jesus did not misquote David. Rather, he interpreted the Scripture, explained the truth David discovered. There is supernatural strength loosed on our behalf when we praise God. Can we say that again? There is supernatural strength loosed on our behalf when we praise God. So it does no good to sit there tight-lipped with your mouth shut. It just doesn't do any good. You garner strength by praising God. Power in praise. Your simple act of praise is bigger than you are. Because it connects you with a God who is bigger than you are. Praise accomplishes that what we can't accomplish because it launches spiritual weapons at the enemy that demolishes his strength and silences his voice. David learned from one laboratory, the laboratory of life, about praise. As long as he was praising God, situations of all his enemies were turned around. In 1 Samuel 16 and 23, amen, we know about the evil spirit from God that came upon Saul, amen, 
But when David took out the harp and he played with his hand, Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Amen. Uh, when David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield, he said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast to find. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Amen. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David, the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm going to say that again. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Folks, there are times, and I've had this happen in my life, and I'm going to be honest with you, even where my pastor was not available to help me. He's human, by the way. He's not always, he can't always be there 24-7 at your beck and call. I know we'd like him to be, but the reality of it is he has life that happens to him too. Amen? <laughs> we'll get there eventually, I promise you. Amen. But there have been times when I haven't always had somebody there that I could call upon and say, you know, I need your help, or someone to call and say, I need you to pray for me. And, you know, there are times when, you know, for whatever reason, they could be out of town. Who knows what will take place? But sometimes you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. There are times when you will not always have... That's why praise is so important, that when you learn the value of praise, when in doubt, you can always lift your voice and begin to extol and magnify God. When in doubt, you can always begin to lift Him, even if you don't have an answer to the question, and you're not sure what to do. You can say, you know what, God, you're greater than me. You can access this situation much better than I can but I can lift my voice, I can magnify you, I can bless you, I can glorify your holy name, for there is none above you. You're great and greatly to be praised. The heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. You're the Lord of hosts. You're the captain of my salvation. You're the fairest among ten thousand. Amen. You're the bright and the morning star. You're the alpha. You're the omega. You're the beginning. You're the... You get my point here today? Amen. You can glorify Him. You can magnify Him. You can lift Him up and exalt Him and God will come and move in your situation. <laughs> David learned, amen, that in desperate situations of life, our reactions become more and more childlike. They do. That's good because out of the simplicity of a childlike response comes the most powerful weapon God's ever unleashed to fight the enemy. Praise. Praise is the most powerful thing God has ever given us. Has anybody ever felt like you can't think because the situation is just so rough? I mean, you ever just get to, I mean, where the storm is so hot, you're just like, I can't even function right now. I just, you know, you, you just kind of, it's like, I can't get my mind right. And folks, can I tell you, the enemy comes in spiritual attacks like that sometimes. Where you seem like you can't get a thought what in your head. Man, matter of fact, I believe it was Isaiah declared that the noise of battle, he said, is noise and garments rolled in blood. He said, that when you're in the midst of a battle, man, he said, there's so much noise going on around you, it's hard to get your bearings straight. Amen. He's saying that you're, there's a clashing of swords around you. Amen. The, 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 there's the, the screaming of men. There's the, the, all of these things that are, ta- all the outside noise sometimes can get to you. That's why sometimes the best response is just to praise God. Y'all, please forgive me tonight. I'm really struggling with my... I've got some drainage going down the back of my throat that won't stop here tonight. The Bible is filled with praise. You know, I don't apologize for our exuberance of worshiping God. I will never apologize for worshiping God. Especially if I want to be exuberant about it. If David, the king of Israel, by the way, could step out on the White House lawn and begin to praise God and dance before the Lord with all of his might... I grow weary of these folks that think you're supposed to sit in the pew with your mouth all quiet. Are you kidding me? Apparently they ain't never been to heaven. I know what the book says. Amen. Here are just a few of the ways David found to praise God and to silence the enemy. In Psalms 113 and 1. I'm going to give you some psalms here, and I want you to kind of stay with me on this. I'm going to read about four psalms off here real quick, because I want to use some 
I'm going to get all Greek on you and Hebrew on you. Amen. But I'm going to give you some, some Hebrew here right now. Just hang on with me just a second. I mean, at times have I explained this to you, that the English language is kind of like a two-lane highway. Our language is. Compared to the Hebrew and the Greek, they're like a seven-lane highway full of words. And we try to shove them into our two lanes. Remember I told you like the word love and, and, and just different words that you'll see the Bible use, especially the King James Version. It'll be, the, it'll be a word like uh, praise. But yet there's like eight different Hebrew words for the word praise, and we just use the word praise. So we really don't fully comprehend what they're saying when they say it. And so I want to try to help you with that a little bit here tonight. Psalms 113 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The word there is halal. H-A-L-A-L. It means to show, to make a show, to boast, to be clamorously foolish, to rave. That's what it means. I'm going to say that again. To be clamorously foolish. Okay, ladies, I'm going to sum it up like this. When you were, you and, when you were looking for a man in your life, how many of y'all wanted him to make a fool of himself over you? Oh, am I going to get in trouble now? Am I, am, okay, I see how it's going to be. All right, that's how it's going to be tonight. I got you. <clears throat> Us guys will do stupid stuff when we really fall in love with you. We'll do clamorously foolish things. Yes, we will. We don't usually make it a point to stay on the phone all night with you. But we will when we're chasing you. We don't make it a point to bring flowers all the time. But we will when we're chasing you. All the guys at work, you bought her flowers? Really? You bought flowers? Yeah, I bought flowers. You don't admit that stuff. I do. I buy flowers. I buy chocolates. And I eat half of them. <laughs> What's the name of that place, Sonny? Uh, that, that edible fruit place? Edible arrangements. I buy edible arrangements. I need half that fruit, too. Amen. Whatever she gets, I get half. Amen. But she can keep the flowers. Amen. But it's to make a show, to boast. You mean to tell me praise is poor? That's what he said. Make a boast in the Lord. Be clamorously foolish before God. Even if other men call you a fool. Who cares? I really don't worry about what other men have to say. I'm worried about my relationship with God. Because he's got the final say. Psalms 115 and 18. Ready for 116 and 2 next, okay? 115 and 18. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. That word praise there is our former president's name, Barak. It means to kneel in adoration. It means literally to kneel, literally to kneel down and praise this way. Clamor foolishly. But this is just to kneel. And but notice it's the same word, praise, that we just put into our little lane of, you know, our, our, our English language is just so, it's so limited. But it means to kneel in adoration, much like you would kneel before a king. Amen. So there's a portion of that. Amen. Psalms 116 and 2. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. That word there, call, means kara. It means to call out, to preach, to proclaim, to cry unto. I'm going to proclaim it. Some folks don't like Pentecost preaching. They think it's too loud. I don't care. Well, there's, you know, the Bible makes it clear there's preaching and there's teaching. Preaching is exhortation. You have too many preachers that are actually teachers. The reality of it is, is preaching gets away with sin, and teaching builds you back up. Amen? One tears down, one builds up. That's the whole purpose behind it. But it makes us boast in here, and he says, it's to call out to preach, to proclaim. 
You know, the psalmist he cried out of the trumpet. He said, and spare not. He cried aloud. Don't be afraid to spare. Can I ask you a question? Do you all have children? Some of you here has ever had children. Did you ever have to yell at them? Or did you always talk to them with the, you know, where you come over to them real nice and quietly and go, well, little Susie, you know, let, let us have a discussion here today. You know, there have been times my daughter got too close to the street, car was coming. Hey! Kylie, I taught you better than that. Look both ways before you cross the street. Now that can not try yet. But that didn't do any good when she's that close to the street. Hello, stop! What are you doing? Knock it off! There's no place for it, folks. Amen. That's why the Bible says, because he's inclined his ear to me, therefore I'm going to call upon his name as long as I live. I'm going to cry out about him. Amen. There's no need to be bashful when it comes to him. He saved me for crying out loud. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Psalm 116 and 17, a few verses later, he said, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Psalm 116 and verse 17. I said, y'all, please forgive me tonight. I don't need to hack it all over the place up here. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. You know, that, that, that word call upon, once again, this means toda. It's a choir of worshipers with upraised hands. A choir of worshipers with upraised hands. No different than when we're in here and we begin to sing and we begin to praise and go, I was lifted up my hands, amen, be as the evening sacrifice. No more we don't carry bullocks and goats and put them on altars anymore. Instead, he said, here's your sacrifice. You lift your hands unto the Lord. But the lifting of my hands, he said, be as the evening sacrifice. When I lift my hands unto him, amen, that's a sacrifice of praise. The Bible said, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually, giving thanks to his name. Amen. So, uh, Toda means a choir of worshipers with uplifted hands. Now, these are just some of them. I, there's a ton of these, folks. I'm not going to go through all of them. But there's literally over at least 25 different praise words in the Hebrew just alone for praise. But we translate praise. I'll give you a couple more here because I, I'm going to try to, some of them are closely related, others are not so, I'm going to try to give you the ones that are not so closely related. Psalms 117, verse 1. Now, these are just in the Psalms, literally one, one chapter away from each other. Psalms 117, verse 1. David's almost given us the whole rundown, the whole gamut of praise. <clears throat> oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise Him, all ye people. That word there is Shabbat. It means to address in a loud tone, triumph or glory. To shout out. Amen. To address in a loud tone. Psalm 118 and 1, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. That word there is yada, which means to worship with extended hands. With your hands extended. Not just lifted, but extended out. Really like you're trying to reach Him. That's what that means. You see all these different words to describe how ways to praise and worship God? Psalm 118, or Psalm 118 and 24. This is the day. This is one of my favorite ones here because it really blows people away when I tell them what it means. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, y'all didn't know this, so I'm going to throw this at you. We say this verse a lot. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. I know I can't sing. The only singer in my family is a sewing machine. But oh, come on, I work on these jokes every now and then. Y'all got to laugh every once in a while. Y'all need to help. Y'all just being brutal to me today. Ain't giving me no help whatsoever. The only singer in my family is a sewing machine. Don't you get it, singers? If i got to explain it, never mind. I just ain't going to do it anymore. Goodness gracious. Honey, you warned me. You warned me. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. And be... You know what that means? Rejoice there? See, Hebrew word gil. It's one of my favorite words. G-I-Y-L. Gil. To spin around violently. 
Best I got, folks. I'm sorry. If I do that again, I'll fall down, so I can't do that. I ain't 18 anymore. Amen. It means to spin around violently. To spin around violently, rejoicing that God has given you another day. I want to see some of y'all get up tomorrow morning when you wake up and say, Thank you, Lord, for giving me another day. They'll probably knock over everything in the house. And, well, Pastor told me to do it. Blame me. Amen. That's all right. I'll live with it. Psalm 118 and 28. I'm going to give you one more here. I want to move on. I'll tell you a little bit more about this. Here. Psalm 118, verse 28. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, and I will exalt thee. That word there simply means for praise, means rum, R-U-W-M, to exalt, to extol, to lift up, to set on high. In other words, what you're doing is you're taking him and actually trying to set him up. You understand that concept? Lord, you're here, but I'm going to take you up here. I'm going to take you up. Not because he needs it but because you need it. Do you understand the concept here? God does not need our praise to survive. He's not like some kind of praise junkie. I need your praise. I need your praise. No, praise is for your benefit. So you can be brought up to where He is. Do you understand the concept? A lot of times we think it's like God's some kind of praise junkie. He needs our praise. No. He needs the praise for us to bridge us into a right relationship with Him. To put us on His level. To get up to where He is. He can bless us. Amen. Notice that all these biblical forms of worship demand a response to the mouth. Ah. Or through motion. Mouth. Ah. Motion. Put your hands up. And they you say, you Pentecostal folks are crazy. No, no. I'm sorry, I got a book for me. I don't know what you got going on, but I know what my Bible says. Amen. I don't just listen to men. Amen. I listen to what the Word of God says. Amen. <laughs> How many of y'all know that every love affair involves emotions? I'm going to marry you, honey, because I can't stand you. Really? I hate your guts. Now come marry me. No, I love you, therefore, I would like to, because our love is shared, I would like to take that to the next level. Right? Every love of very involves emotions. Amen. Some folks say, well, I'm not the emotional type. Oh, boy. I've heard that a million times. I'm not emotional. Yes, you are. Everybody's emotional. God gave you emotions. Ain't nothing wrong with them. Just make sure they're under wraps. Remember? Wire insulation around it. Nothing wrong with emotions. I remember I went one time to pray for somebody in the hospital. Somebody went with me. And they got all Pentecostal when they're praying. Nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But there is when people don't understand what's going on around them. You can't do that when folks don't understand. you got to put some wraps around it. Amen. Don't you think God's going to, God ain't going to hear your prayer if you don't get too loud? He's going to hear you when you pray. The power of God began to move, and she was just reacting to the power of God moving in her. Amen. As we were praying. I said, but the Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Please understand that. Amen. In other words, when the spirit of prophecy or the power of God is moving upon you, it is subject to you. It means it doesn't mean you have to sit there and shake their head a hundred times. You can just lay hands on them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of the Lamb over you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. That's why it's so important, biblically speaking, amen, that we understand the purpose of praise and worship. When you say you're not the emotional type, what you mean is you're only emotional about things that are important to you. That's what it means. The Bible tells us there's only one kind of person that is exempt from the command to praise. One person. Anybody know who the exempt person is from the command to praise? Okay. 
You asked for it. I'm going to give it to you. You had the chance to answer. Psalm 115 and 17. Give me that. Y'all like, Brother D, that knows going to be a pop quiz tonight. Psalm 115, verse 17. Uh Uh-oh, here they are. The dead praise not the Lord. Neither any that go down into silence. Dead can't praise God. That's the only people that can't praise God or won't praise God are the dead. Why? Because there's no breath in them to praise God. That's why the Bible says, Let everything that's got breath praise ye the Lord. You're not exempt. If you got breath, on there with your arms folded and your mouth shut. With the lifting of my hands, we have the evening sacrifice. Mouth. Motion. Mouth. Motion. Mouth. Motion. The Bible also makes these comments about the dead. It's better for him that has joined all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Matthew 8, 22 says, Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Matthew 22 and 32 says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. You know, one of the most spiritual tells for a pastor when they're watching people and knowing they're going through stuff is to watch, excuse me, is to watch their worship life when they're in church, if they can praise or not. Or if they will praise or not. Other than sit there with their mouths quiet or not and just shake their head or nod and do one of these numbers here and, you know, barely give you a response whatsoever. Disinterested. Thinking about frishes or white castles. God, he's preaching too long. I wish he'd shut up. You know why? Because I've been there. I had a preacher wore me out one night. I, God, Lord, would you please, please make him shut up? Psalms 146, 147, 148, 149, all begin and end with the praise. Praise ye the Lord. It's like a crescendo to the ending of all the songs. We're going to start it off with praise ye the Lord, and we're going to end it off with praise ye the Lord. In the final crescendo of all crescendos, Psalms 150 says what? Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the ferment of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery in the heart. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. What a crescendo. Anybody know what that main word was? You guys are so sharp. Amen. The Bible teaches that the mouth is a center of spiritual warfare. The mouth can either launch devil's weapons or God's weapons. You can either be praising God or gossiping about someone. It's your call. Well, I mean, you you use it for what you you want to. Amen? We have the capacity to do both. We have the ability to do anything we want to do. You know, I know that. Revelation 16, 13 said, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. James 3 and 6 is the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And is set on fire of hell. Proverbs 18, 20. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Amen. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. You know, there is a false name it and claim it group out there. Blab it and grab it. They say, all you got to do is speak it, and it'll come to you. We'll name it and claim it crowd. The reason there is a false name it and claim it crowd is because the Bible contains a true name it and claim it principle. Let me say it again. There's a name it and claim it principle that is true. 
And of course, you know, whatever God has made true, the devil has to come up with a counterfeit. Right? The devil always brings forth counterfeits to the true things of God because he can't defeat it, so he has to muddy the waters. That's how it works. He didn't keep Joseph from the pit. He didn't keep Daniel from the lion's den and the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace or Paul and Silas from the prison. But because they started praising instead of pouting, God walked with them through each situation. He delivered Joseph from the pit because he praised God. He delivered Daniel from the lion's den because he praised God. He delivered the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace because they praised God. He uh, delivered Paul and Silas from the jail because what? At midnight, they were praising God. And there came a great earthquake upon the jail. (laughs) All because of the power of praise. There is power in your praise. The question is, which weapon will you launch? When you praise instead of panic, and you worship instead of worry, God fights for you. I know that's easier said than done. Look, I've been in situations where, man, you just worry yourself silly. And it's hard not to worry. That's why God answers in the midst of your worry when you praise. Because of how hard it is to do. It's easy to praise when things are going well, isn't it? Let's be honest here. When things are going good, thanks, Lord. Thanks for the raise. Thanks for this. Thanks for that. Thanks, 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 thanks. But when things ain't going so good, oh, man. And it's Wednesday night. Folks just getting off work. So tired, it's ridiculous. Just preach, man. Brother and Sister Root are up here playing and you've been and they're singing and they're doing their best. Brother Travis is trying to help with worship and praise and we're, we're not helping at all. I just ain't got it tonight. I mean, you ain't got it tonight. You got it every night. You just don't have to use it tonight. Amen. That's why it's important that when, this, you know, can I tell you, God really answers you when you're going through the rough situations and you begin to pray. That's when the real answer comes. Is when you're in the midst of the battle and you praise God anyway. Don't you know what the enemy wants? He wants you to sit there with your mouth shut and quiet. He said, don't you dare praise God in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your struggles and strife and, stri- and tr- you know, and try to get you to, to keep your mouth quiet. If he can shut you up, he can brag before God and say, see, I told you they'd be quiet. I told you they'd be. Look what he did to Job. But yet Job, in the midst of all this, Job did not sin. Hey, you know, it's an amazing thing, amen, when you see how God works. In 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 20 through 18 through 22, I'm going to getting leery of time here. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they forth they went, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Lord, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. They said, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set forth ambushments against the children of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. When David writes in Psalms 1, that we should bless the Lord. He is not just saying we should bless the Lord because of past benefits. He's also telling us as we bless the Lord, we actually walk in the benefits of praise. We actually walk in the benefits of praise. Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy Name for he. No, it's not good. We'll get into the psalm. But he said, well, I'm not done with the psalm yet. Hold on. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeem. Now listen now. Forgiving, healing, redeeming, he crowns you and satisfies you with life. 
All of that out of praise. He forgives out of praise. He heals out of praise. He redeems out of praise. He crowns out of praise. And He satisfies out of praise. So the next time you come in here on Wednesday night and you don't feel like giving it your all, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out. Because you might have the one thing that you need most is right there, Ted. It's all in your mouth. You have a choice to make. Your mouth can either, listen, your mouth can either launch the weapons of the devil to defeat you or the weapons of praise that gives you victory. Amen. You know, there's a, um, to, to praise, is, I mean, secret to victory is continual praise. Let me say that again. The secret to victory is continual praise. I've just given you a grand theory of life. You know how I know that? Watch this. I know the secret of being rich. I think I've told you this one before, right? You all, you all know, would you all like to know what the secret of being rich is? Huh? You're right on target, by the way. The secret to being rich. Watch what poor people do, then don't do that. That was brilliant. I'm brilliant today. Right? Now watch this now. You want to not go to hell? Watch what people that go to hell do and don't do that. Continual praise brings continual victory. The secret to victory is continual praise. This is the praise that led to Pentecost. Hello? Wake up, you Pentecostals. The prelude that led to Pentecost was praise. You don't believe me? Let's try it a different way. Luke chapter 24, verse 53. Now this is the prelude to the book of Acts. I know the book of John sequentially comes after that, but these are the four Gospels. Talk about the four different Gospels here. Even the book of Acts comes after these four Gospels. But Luke 24 and 43, or 53 says, And they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Real simple. The ultimate expression of praise is when you allow God to take control of your mouth, which is the center of spiritual warfare, and fill you with the Holy Ghost. Why do you think God uses your mouth as an expression? When we see the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when you speak in other tongues, the Spirit of God giveth the utterance, it says. Not as you give it, but as God gives it. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it says, It shall come to pass after that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall in Acts 2 and 39, said, For this promise unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He said, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. <clears throat> if you open your mouth wide, I will fill it. Anytime God has ever declared sonship, He's always done it through voice. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, hear He, Him. And when He declares sonship in you, there's going to come a voice out of you. You know, you have to understand something. Maybe maybe it will help if I put it to you this way. If you want a revelation in your life, it starts with praise. How do I know that? Well, the last book of the Bible before Revelation is a little book called Jude. You ever heard of it? Anybody know what Jude means? You guessed it. It means praise. The doorway to the revelation was praise. Our doorway to a revelation with God is pure praise. Folks, you know why it's so great about praise? You don't have to have a theological degree to do it. You don't have to have complete understanding to do it. 
He said, out of the mouth of sucklings and babes thou hast perfected praise. Why? Because children, what do they do? They just do what they're told, right? For the most part. And so God speaks to us and He calls us and says, I want you to be a praiser. So why are we there with our mouths closed? It's important to praise God. What about that gilding stuff, you know? You... There may be a time for that. I would say it happens all the time. There are times where you just look in your hands. I could have gone on further here, but there are times when praise requires running. I could have gone on. There's, like I said, there's a lot of praise words in here. that we, we, we cycle it down into two words, praise or call upon. There's proscunio, which means to set forth on your face. Laying yourself face forward on the ground. Praise is amazing stuff, folks. Amen. And if we do it, if we get our mindset to praise God, like God wants us to praise Him, there's no telling the kind of victory you can have through praise. That's why I wanted to bring it up again, to make sure we understand the power of praise. The reason I say that is because we're so used to having good worship or we're used to having praise and, you know, like, like it's no big deal and, and it becomes second nature to us that it almost becomes commonplace. Don't ever let praise become commonplace. Always let it be all inspiring. Always let it be all inspiring. We're not just singing three songs up here, Brother Travis. No, no. We're praising the Lord. We're praising what we know how to do. Sometimes we do it better than other times. But the reality of it, sometimes God comes in and gives us visitation. He's the ultimate wonder around here, not us. Amen. He's the creator. I'm the creation. When the creator tells the creation what to do, amen, the creation needs to do what the creator tells it to. That's why the Bible said he turned them over into unclean minds here in the book of Romans. Because the creation thought it was greater than the creator. When the creation thinks it's greater than the creator, you know, there was a fellow by the name of Henry Ford. Have you ever heard of him? There was a guy driving down the road one day, and he broke down, and Henry Ford pulled over to help him. And of course, it was a Model T. Henry's Henry. And Henry came over and said, Young fella, can I help you? He goes, Oh, this car is beyond help. He said, I, I don't know what to do with it. I, I, don't, I don't know how to fix it. It's, it's a mess. There's just no way to fix this car. He said, are you a mechanic? He said, well, kind of. He said, I'm not really a mechanic per se. He said, I, he said but I know a little bit about these cars. He said, well, he said, can you help me? And he said, well, let's take a look at it. What's it doing? And he goes through the whole limbo of things that can go wrong with the car. And him before he looks at it, and he says, well, let me tell you something. He said, I want you to go to the back of that car right there. And you see that little piece right there? He said, just give me a little piece of that right there. And he takes a little piece of, uh, little piece of wire and he takes it and he wraps it around something on top of the engine. He said, we're just going to do this real quick. And he does something with the engine of the car. And the car fired right back up. And the guy's like, well, that's amazing. He said, now listen, young man, you hear me now. He said, You're going to, he said this, you get down the road. This is only going to last you for about, until you get about 10 minutes down the road and it's going to quit again. He said, how far you say you got to go? He said, well, I've got to get about five more minutes to my house. He said, well, here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to break you off another piece and another piece and another piece. He said, until you get it fixed. He said, because it's okay. You can keep doing that. He said, you'll be able to do that for a little bit. He said, but don't continue to do it. You need to get it fixed eventually. Folks, sometimes we're like that. We take little pieces and we just keep putting on there, putting them on and putting them on and never really getting it fixed. When the Creator that knows how to make this thing run is giving us instructions saying, here, you need to go in and bring that thing in and get it fixed right. And the only way to do that, folks, is by lifting your voice and praising God. Not just when you feel like it, feel like it's time to put a little piece on. Put a little piece on. Put a little piece on. But go in and get it fixed. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise is vital to who and what we are. 
because you've been called to be a praiser unto him. Don't we stand tonight? <coughs> I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do do my best to sing a little bit tonight. I know Sister Tiffany's having a problem with Olivia tonight, it sounds like. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna do my best to sing. I want you to lift your hands right where you're at tonight. Can you do that for me? Just right where you're at. I'm not going to. Can you do... See, y'all, see how hard that was? It was real easy, wasn't it? See, look at you. Let the lifting of my hands, he said, be as the evening sacrifice. That's good. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Amen. Can we just call upon the name of the Lord for a few moments? Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. Lord, we give you all the praise and the blessing and the glory and honor. For you are worthy to receive it. Lord, you alone, oh God, are worthy to receive praise in this house today. And we extol you, Lord God. We do magnify your holy and precious name here today. And give glory unto you, oh God, that have brought us out of darkness. Into your marvelous light here today. Lord, you who have taken us who were beggarly, Lord God. And brought us into high places in Christ Jesus. Lord, I magnify and I bless you. And thank you for your great mercy that you give us every day. Lord, my soul doth magnify you. My very being, oh God, cries out to you here today. Say thank you, Lord God, for not just giving me another day, but giving me another opportunity to worship you in this house. Another opportunity to worship together with brethren here today and sisters here today. Lord, in spirit and in truth. Trusting and believing in your power and divine presence in this house today. Let your anointing fall on us again, O oh God. And be merciful to us for another day. There are many here today, Lord God, as we look upon them. Lord, you know their lives. You know situations that are calling them in their life today. Let your divine blessing be upon them. Help them, O oh God. Teach them to walk worthy of vocation wherewith they are called here today. Let your divine power, your divine glory, and your divine anointing strengthen them for another day today. For you alone meeteth out the heavens in a span. By the work of your fingers, you made the stars and the moon. <laughs> there is truly none above you. For holy art thou, O God. We receive strength from you. We receive help from you. And we receive blessing today. God, be merciful to us. Can we lift up our voices right now, Sister Tiffany, please.